have you seen much, Bertolucci, Eric? No, I, I don't get to the cinema much, Mrs. Lomax. With work, you know. Dawn's never really told us what your job is. Oh, I'm in uh, food, uh, transportation, management. Management? Today's advisor reckoned Dawn had management potential. Dad? But she does. Maybe one day Dawn will follow your example, Eric. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I was lucky. Wan Ying. In Chinese, the words Wan Ying means welcome. In Roker Bridge, two words mean Chinese. Oh. Roman holiday. The kind of place Audrey Hepburn would have had if she'd come to Lancashire. What makes us so classy? Is it our class atmosphere? Our wine list? Or is it our class call-out delivery service? Remember, Wan Ying means welcome. And if you want to eat one, then Ying to the Roman holiday. You will fancy a Coke. Well, was that advert 600 quid well spent or what? I tell you, they're going to have people turn up to see it and then leave them before the film starts. <laughs> Never seen Dawn get this blasted. Hello, Roman no, Holiday. Dutch courage. <laughs> she came on Friday saying she was jacking in a teaching <laughs> office. <laughs> He's taken me in a pair until weekends and talking into giving it another yes. go. Very <laughs> funny. How many? <laughs> no. Could I have a name, please? All this is about. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Surreal. Sorry. Really? Eight people round a table drinking champagne. Oh, no, no, no. Round no, no, a sponge no, no. face at Audrey Hepburn. Mm. So your girlfriend out, Eric. She's getting yeah. me pissed. Pour us another champagne, sweetheart. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know what. Yeah. I know. I'm no going problem. back tomorrow. But See ya. I don't want tomorrow. It's a bloody one, Yig. <laughs> oh, my God. What's the matter? It's happened. <laughs> I've made it. One cinema advert. And suddenly... I'm in the big time. Samantha Fox. Just booked for Friday. I feel about 16. There will come a time when I'm ready for my daughter to find a man in my bed in the morning. Meantime. Meantime, Dr. Kane, you just have to get us invited to more of these society parties. Yeah, well, hopefully more salubrious society than Saturday is going to be. Oh, God. <laughs> Did you get a babysitter? Yeah, yeah, because he's having a sleepover next door. Um, what's on the news about Saturday? I thought this patient of yours was a millionaire. Yes. Well, why are we going if you think it's unsalubrious? Because the event, Janetta, my sweetheart, is frankly secondary to the night it requires in the hotel afterwards. Uh, <sighs> Sorry to ring you like a taxi, on. Well, you do know nothing. Got to nip in the drill all the way. I was just walking through the school gates. Murad rushed up to me and said Imran had thrown his lump of moon rock from Cape Canaveral into the canteen bins. I just looked at him for about 15 seconds, burst into tears and walked straight back out. Poor old Murad will now always think the reason why Miss Lomax left was because she couldn't cope emotionally with the loss of his moon rock. As she left, I don't care about your moon rock, Murad. I don't care much about you, Murad. Dawn, I bet half the teachers who taught me didn't actually like children. Yeah, well, that's what's hit me up. You can stand in a classroom, you can point at a blackboard. But if you don't like kids, you're never going to be a teacher. Is this fair on Eric? Hey, I'm not going to sponge. I'm not like Hodge's ex with a bloody sugar daddy. I'm not going to do a Laura and Luke. I mean, shouldn't you tell him I'm driving you up to Totally Jack in college? No, he'll try and talk me out of it. He spent all weekend trying to get me back on this teaching practice. You know, it's amazing how important college is to people who never went. 
Corporal! 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 I'm not going to call you. Corporal. Hi, Pete. Do you know why we've been called in? Come on now, Corporal. Wearing a vest doesn't stop me being a sergeant. It might if it was a very big vest. Mm. I'm not being funny, it's just that in the regulars I found using the correct rank names, it's just one of those little pegs that holds the military together. Did you know? Sant. Ali, Pete. Well, I'm pleased to report a certain appointment's gone off to a good start. I... Thanks, boss. I'm pleased with the way it's going as well. The training schedules... Not you, Pete. Hey. Eh? In March, Corporal Minchel was assessed for officer training, and I'm happy to report she just passed the DAV. As of now, she's an officer cadet. You'll do preliminary training under this wing of the company, Ali. Until we both think you're ready for phase two, and eventually Sandhurst. Both? Yes. With, um, with you being ex-regular, Pete, the CO thought it might be good if Ali were to train under you. It won't affect your training plans. Except, of course, as an officer cadet, you should address her as ma'am. But that depends on your attitude, Ali. Oh, we, um, we tend to think that ranks are important little pegs. Don't we, Sant? Well. Oh. It's for Sam Fox. Why is it over the top? <laughs> Eve! Dawn. No, you know I always get that wrong. You know, it's because you like Eve. Clever, beautiful. Mr Wang. You want to come and work here, you know? College girl. You know, when you got your degree? Is Eric around? Because at this rate, we're going to have Roman holidays all over Lancashire. And it'll look good commercially, you know, to have a woman in management. Just to show I'm not sexist, like. Especially a pretty one. Mr Wang, if, like for people without degrees, do you have any non-management jobs? Tonight's going to be one of the greatest tragedies of the 20th century. I can't bear to see the look on Wang's face when this woman called Samantha walks in who just happens to have married a Mr Fox. Not at all. Happens all the time. Well, the next caravan to me ended up called Debbie Reynolds. Mum's hairdresser was called Liz Taylor. I went to school with a kid called Dwayne Pipe. That's not the same, is it? It's funny, though. I mean, you think his parents would have realised. Lloyd, he just gets a mint. I do understand the point, OK, about Samantha Fox. I know it suits you all thinking I'm stupid. He's daft and spending eight quid on flashy dinner mints. Mm. But she won't eat them, you know. She's dead thin, Sam Fox. <laughs> it's not gonna Sorry. be the Samantha Fox! It's not gonna it? be the Samantha Fox. It's some woman who happens to be called Samantha Fox. Uh, and a portion of voice in sauce, Miss Fox. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks. Mm. Just think, Mr. Diddley. The lips that sang, touch me, feel my body. Yeah, eat my crispy duck. <laughs> so as we were, um... As we were saying, um, uh, con congratulations, new officer cadet, um, to Ali. Oh, uh, Ali. Yeah. Grab this. Yeah. I want you to take a photo uh, before she goes. I'm starting the line of stars. Uh, you know, me and Sam Fox and me and Tony Bennett. Hold on, hold on. With all due respect, you don't seriously think that Samantha Fox is here because he's a cinema lad. Oh. Uh, <coughs> uh, just as a matter of interest, Miss Fox, uh, what made you tell your hotel to book this restaurant? I asked my assistant. I wanted somewhere quiet. Oh, yeah, you don't want any ass on the night before the gig, do you? I know a bit about showbiz. I used to do a Marvin Gaye act in Ormskirk. Really? <laughs> Quite famous, actually. They used to call me Ormsk Kirk's answer to Joey Malone. Who's Joey Malone? This bloke in Liverpool who used to do a Marvin Gaye act. Oh, right. Well, I'm actually here to do a concert. Oh, yeah. I suppose you can't be, can you? Because um, there's only the Memorial Hall in Roker Bridge, and they have badminton on Saturdays. No, no. I'm here on business. Oh, no. On a Saturday night? Oh, it's tough at the top, isn't it? 
Oh, it shouldn't be too arduous. I'm just doing a celebrity opening of a brand new Chinese restaurant. Oh, yeah. Sounds. <laughs> anyway, enjoy your meal. Thank you very much. There will be some figures around. I just... You bastards! I'm here at a monkey! That's what you made me! I'm supposed to be lucky! Come on, Mr Wang, you burned your head quite badly on that plate warmer. Do something, Eddie. Come on, like why? You know what this chai should be? I should be near the bloody Unilo block! Because everything I do, I get blocked! Just calm down, will ya? Come on, who cares about this restaurant, eh? Look, you can fight your corner without... Look, you can fight by just... by just believing in equality! Just look at Dawn, eh? What? This girl, okay. She hates teaching practice. That's a rival restaurant. Yeah? That's a battle. Now, does she let it beat her? Or does she fight through it? She fights. And I'm so proud of her for that. But that's what you've got to say. I will not let you beat me. I will fight you because in here, I know that I am quality. I am strong. I am Wang. Yeah? In ten years, they'll be printing that on tea towels. I never normally come out with little gold nuggety eggs with speeches like that, mate. It's normally odd you comes out with a golden eggs. I just spray out omelette, you know? Oh, sorry. No, your teaching practice is knackery enough without chasing drunk scouts all night, innit? I did go today, eh? What'd you do? Sat in the Happy Egg Coffee Bar in Gatley Street. Great! Wow! <laughs> Is that what you do now for showing kids science and that? It's what you do if you've chucked in college. She's a waitress! You've done it again, haven't you? She's chucked in college! They emptied the cereal into the box to get to the little man. She's a waitress! Are you ever gonna move out? It's worse than a waitress. She's a waitress of Mr. Wang's. Ah, oh, knackers. I've already got a jaw, Rob. She's got the only job in the world that actually looks at the ladder and sees mine. What do you want, Mum? Happy girlfriend or successful girlfriend? Well, happy. OK. But well, people who get drunk because they don't want tomorrow to bloody Wan Ying are not happy. Yeah, but short term. In the short term, she's happy. The short term is where people live, Eddie. This is the short term. It's great. Stop wanting her to want chances you never had. Lloydie, get the phone! No, you've just missed him. Can I take a message? Uh, just tell him Janetta. Huh. I nearly bought a car called a Janetta once. What I mean is, OK, it, it kind of escaped your notice that Dawn is better than what we both thought I'd ever end up with, isn't she? Well, don't do yourself down, Hodge. Yeah, she is by miles. But I hope you don't think she doesn't love you. I think, Hodge, if the look in her parents' eyes when that cinema advert ended. We have a beautiful, intelligent daughter who could have been a manager. You are the kind of directionless pond life we only see when our pool needs cleaning. Mixing with you is going to bring her down to your level. And they're right. It has. Soames, could you go put these in the boot for me, please, honey? I just need Order. to go and collect... Hello, baby. Eric. How are... All right. How are you? Other cheek, other cheek. Right. How are you? Great. Fine. That's a lovely... Uh... Car? Well, car, yeah. And, uh, and the dress is... Uh... Well, and hat. Madrid. Right. Me and Greg are in town for the weekend on business. Are you still doing your army thing, then? Listen, Laura, I tried ringing you, but you were always in, like, you know, uh, Madrid or something. We never got a chance to clear up. Toosh. Pardon? Water under the bridge, honey. If I hadn't seen you and Janetta cavorting in that warehouse, I'd have never gone back to Greg for a bit of sympathy, and none of this would have happened. I was comforting her, Laura. We just had a row about Kirsty. Do you see Kirsty? Well, that was kind of the upshot of it, really. I mean, Janetta promised to tell Kirsty that her ex was well, your Greg, wasn't her dad. So now I visit every other weekend. Oh, sweet. Sort of one weekend you play soldiers, the next you play daddies. I am her dad, Laura. Absolutely. And without any financial responsibility. Must be wonderful. 
cake and eating it. But then you always did fall on your feet. Listen, I don't know what 50 pounds buys these days, not much I suppose, but uh, buy Kirsty something from me. Little toy. Put it towards the first pony. Bye, baby. Okay, for those of you that don't know much about the army, don't all step forward at once or get bloody trampled. This white tape has magically turned Corporal Minchel into Officer Cadet Minchel. As part of whose training this bright Saturday morning, I'm going to put in charge of, ooh, let me see, two section. Gentle reminder of the world of leadership. Simple navigation through Malham Woods. Ma'am, they're all yours. Thank you, Sergeant. <clears throat> okay, two section, prepare to move in ten. Get that weather report from Press and Met. Yes, Sergeant. Bright start, quickly deteriorating to dense fog. Yeah. I thought so. The solar is a loose. Really? I think we're running into low cloud. Had she changed? No, well, she couldn't have, could she? Whatever she wears, she'll still be the same old Laura underneath. Head from Madrid, dress from Milan, brains from Spudger like. Can we stay tight? No disrespect, Hodge, but you know how there's some people in life who just want to kill with a bent stick? We've got to hand it to her, old Laura. It must be smart living with somebody who owns a biscuit factory. Yeah, I bet. In fact, that would be your ideal woman, wouldn't it? Oh, steady. No, I bet on the dateline form under what do you most want out of a relationship. You're the only bloke who's ever written broken bourbons. I've never actually written to dateline computer, mate. <laughs> I'll bet. Oh, no, I did once, actually, yeah. Only I sent in your photo and details. No women replied, but computer said it were quite interested. Very good. I, too, like Pink Floyd. Can we concentrate, please? Lloydy, go over there. We're drifting because the cloud's too thick to take a bearing off the skyline. I need to do it off something closer. Yeah, right. Hey, have you ever wondered what's actually in a crab stick? Lloydy! I don't like fog, man. What? Seriously, it spooks me hard. Don't worry, big sis. I'll go. Serious? Ever since I was a kid at school. Do you think there are monsters in it? Nasty little fog goblins lurking in the... Oh! Hello. Pete, hi, we were just... With respect, we don't know where we were just, or indeed are, ma'am, do we? I... We could be in Nepal now. The fog could clear and we could all be in downtown Rio, for all you know. <laughs> yeah, well, we weren't that far out, Pete. Not we... that far. Son, we just... Wrong were... is wrong, ma'am, in the military. The RAF can't go back to HQ and say, I'm sorry, boss, we missed the target. But we've got tons in that orange bit around it. I know what... Don't worry, sis. I'll go. I stood behind that train and thought, I'm sorry, I appear to have wandered onto the set of Dad's army. I didn't mean... Military uh, command is like an engine. One tiny move from the top cog, and all the little cogs go whizzing round doing what they're bloody told. It does not run like a meeting of Bolton Labour Council. Shall we go? Oh, I don't know. What about you? Let's vote. All right, Sergeant. Pardon? You've made your point. And I will carry on making my point as long as I like, ma'am. Because that is why I am here, ma'am. Because you are an officer cadet. You are here to shut it and learn, and I am here to train you. We weren't lost, Do you know Sergeant. where you are, ma'am? Tell me where you are, ma'am. Do you know where you are, ma'am? Not the Then you are lost, ma'am. Are you lost? We were just... I asked you a question! Are you lost? Yes, Sergeant! Right. 
then I suggest if you move in that direction, you might find your rendezvous, ma'am. Sorry. Don't bother. Like you said, not miles out, but you could have been. Tea there. That was our fault. It was Lloyd's fault. It weren't my fault. Why were it my fault? All this has to be my fault, doesn't it? Not everything that happens round here is my fault. Is that Janetta's car? No, that is my fault. What? That is. I forgot to pass on your message. Everything else is my fault, though. Hiya! Hiya! Oh, yeah. Watch, it is all right, is it? Your friend said it'd be okay for her to stay the night. Stay? Aye. Yeah. Oh, I thought that even if you were going out, you know, I'd probably be staying in. He'll, uh, sorry, hold on, right. You, you mean, he lives on this thing as well? Uh, uh, lives, uh, no. Has breakfast. Lloyd has breakfast in the caravan. At night he sleeps in the garden under a plastic sheet. Do I? You do now. It's coming up the tree, Ted. <laughs> Shit. He knew there was fog. One, two. He deliberately gave the command of my mates the worst. I mean, why? Oh, God's earth. Because he can. Because officer cadets are the lowest of the low. That's why a married 31-year-old university graduate is currently rubbing oil into shovels. And why are you doing this? Hey, you don't need the hassle. You certainly don't need the money. Yes, I need the excitement, Simon. I need the challenge and the excitement because I currently have a bloody excitement deficit the size of Norway in my life. I'll show you how I knew my true love was true. Until now. Because I am going to have him. I'm gonna bloody show him that at least I can get promotion without resorting to blackmail. Who's resorted to blackmail? And this is Annabelle. She's the head pony and she's in charge of the others. Is she, Mum? That's great. Hey, have you seen my room? Not your room, my lounge. It's full of horses with blue hair, Mum. It's like good wood on acid. What's acid? Lady. Yeah, you, you, you find that they, they do pick up words, children, so just... You're responsible for her now, lads, and she's very precious to us. I'm perfectly responsible. Just because you're not financially doesn't mean you're not at all, eh? Right now, is this hey, private hey, enough Get here? off! I don't want to know because I know exactly what you're going to say. Look, you don't. You bloody don't know what I you're going to say. I know I'm letting everyone down, but I'm not going back to college and I'm not going to sponge off anyone. Look, so here I am in Roker Bridge tonight, starting work as a waitress. Tough. Look. Eve, get back home. What? Go home and get a suit on. I've just made you the manager. Go on, go. Simon, your needles dropped off your fork about ten seconds ago. You kissed once, okay? Me and Lieutenant Rundle. Romantic fluff meant nothing. But apparently, Paulson saw Carl touching my hair afterwards, when we were deciding it meant nothing. Put two and two together. Used it to make sure it was him got awarded that stripe, you see. I'm afraid I might have some bad news here, Al, but... But I don't think there is such a thing as a romantic kiss that means nothing. I mean, I know I'm hardly an expert on the subject, but... Well, people who sit on a touchline often end up knowing more about the game, don't they? One kiss it's... doesn't mean I've stopped loving your husband and fallen in love with someone else. It might just mean you've stopped loving your husband. And it's like Eric says, you know, you fight your corner and... It if... might just mean... If you're... Paulson wants a war inside that drill hall, he's got one. Big smile. Ray. Ray. Ray shoot. Oh, 
Absolubrious. It's a fabulous do. I shouldn't have listened to you. You're too sweet a guy. If he was on Salubrious, he wouldn't have ended up a friend. It's business now. I'm a plastic surgeon. He's a good client. Well, he has a lot of industrial accidents. Well, they're related to his business, but he's out of that gang scene now. You're telling me what? It had skin grafts? Three. The palms of his hands are now technically his buttocks. Jeanetta. Thanks for that, Declan. There's loads about you. Declan. We'll be doing the launch in about... Are you cold? No, no. Five minutes. Come with me. I've only just arrived up here, Janetta. I guess I heard, yes. Most of my cronies are from there. Right? Hi. Down that way. Apart from these two. A couple of friends from your neck of the woods. Greg. Laura. Declan. Janetta. Greg's and biscuits. Declan's my personal physician. Let me get you some champagne. Declan. Nice to meet you. I think we should fill in the cards a little here. Declan, my ex-husband. Podger's ex-girlfriend. Well, we all make mistakes. It's lovely to see you again, Janetta. That's a lovely fur you're wearing. Oslo. And your shoes are fair. Madrid. Well, I'm glad we got that sorted out. Don't ask where the underwear comes from. I have a good idea where it's heading. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's the lights. The nice view. Yeah, there's a nice view, Chinese restaurant. And why do you want the roof lights on? Because we're going into battle, Mr. Disley. Yeah! It's psychology. It's like Mel Gibson painting his face blue. Stiff that! <laughs> I am Wang and I will fight! Or rather, you're Miss Lomax, Will! Oh, God, look! She's nothing to do with this! Now, you know what to do. You are Roman holiday management. And this nonce of an owner didn't give the statutory right required under the Public Entertainment Bylaws, subsection 7. And as an existing Chinese restaurant in the proximity, we have the legal right to demand that he reopen as an Italian. Is that true? No, it's bollocks! Well, it's pointless then, isn't it? Do you want a job or what? Let me go, eh? Get you. This is intimidation. And it's a well-documented fact that men are intimidated by powerful women. I won't tell him, Janetta. I know you've told Kirsty that uh, Greg isn't her father, but... There's still a part of Greg that worries that Kirsty might be his daughter. Hence all the extra he pays you on top of the alimony. Which is great. I'm not bothered. Of course, he might be if he ever found out that the father was Hodge. I just wanted you to know that I won't tell him. I know how much you need that money. Life is just... Isn't it just top and turvy? One day I'm filling volivants for businessmen. The next I'm in the world of business. Greg. Today he doesn't want children. Tomorrow? Who knows? He might even want to start seeing Kirsty. Did you want some more champagne? How are we doing here? Actually, I think your assessment of tonight's company was correct. Shall we retire to the hotel? OK, OK, point taken. Not a good song to be teaching her. Right. Little word about responsibility. <sighs> Children's brains are like sponges. I can relate to that. Shut it. They pick up on everything. Can we sing that one about squirrel again? No. No, we can't. Now, it's time for Lloydie to get into his basher. His what? Oh, it's where he sleeps. Oh, that's lovely. Been an exciting adventure for him. Warm night, stars. If he's a good lad, I might bring him out some cheese sandies. He could have a midnight feast. Good night, Lloydie. Dawn Lomax. Hello, Laura. 
I uh, take it you're not into Friends of the Earth anymore. Isn't he lovely? He cost 800,000 whatever they have in Oslo. I don't know, I live off plastic these days. Must get sticky. Oh no, that's the whole point. What with all the different currencies. Oh, you wouldn't understand this mad world of international business and hey, better off you, Dawn. You know, sometimes, when we're in Luxembourg and breakfast hasn't arrived and we have to be in Paris for lunch, I wish I was going to work in a little classroom with all my little crayons. Well, funnily enough, I do understand the world of business a bit. What, they do business studies in junior schools these days? How funny, so we're both sort of using plastic money. I'm not a teacher anymore, Laura. Not... But Dawn has to be. That's what she does. Dawn Lomax was born to be a teacher. Craig Scully, the biscuit millionaire. This nonsense is making me pig and clean and sell. Scully! Jesus Scully, Craig! Craig. Security, get bloody security now! <laughs> it's me, Peter Wang. You know, you came and asked at me restaurants. You what? No, the Roman holiday. <laughs> you taught me the Chinese for welcome. Remember? Oh. Wan Ying. God, yes. I <laughs> guess I am. Um, uh, of course, I remember now, John. There's not many restaurants where I've had a Gregory Peck special. <laughs> no, it's all right, lads. Yeah, I'm sorry about the, um, it's for you being Chinese, you understand? For a minute I thought old Ray's past had caught up with him. <laughs> anyway, you know we've started doing these new executive sorry. lunches... You, 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 you. What past? Fallowfield 94 all over again. Bloody triads hanging around the foyer. Triads? What, um, background from... Is he then old Ray? Is he boy? Hmm? What? You never shook hands with him? The kind of background where people who cause trouble end up having great difficulty eating Maltesers. You know what I mean? Whoops. Oh dear. Oh, bloody hell. You know, in retrospect, I'm really pleased I came back to Roca Bridge Dawn. I always knew you didn't like me, and I always hoped that the next time I saw you, I would be in furs. Funny. Because I always hoped the next time I saw you, you'd have a wild animal wrapped around your neck, so we both kind of got a wish. You see, you're jealous that I got out, that you're stuck in Roker Bridge. And I'm off in the world of businessmen. Bed, Laura. Bed of a businessman. No, you're not in business. You get little bits of it. Little leftover bits of pastry from around the edge of the mince pies to play with. But you don't get anywhere near the oven, because soon as things get right. a bit hard, the men will be in to take over, to gently pull Laura. you away. I haven't done the job yet. Well, well, well. Hey, I actually have a concrete responsibility to perform here. No, if you'd you like don't. to stick around, I'll show you. Where's the owner? Love to. Ray, baby. Ray, man. Eric! Will you get off? Will you stop acting like a parent and just piss off? Someone sounds angry. Ray, this young lady has some business to do. The owner. I'm here concerning subsection 7 of the Public, public Entertainment Act. Right, I'll do this now. What? I said I'll handle this. Now just get out. Just go back and have a drink. Or a mince pie, perhaps. Right. It's about uh, subsection 7 of the Public Entertainment's bylaw, which states that you, as an existing restaurant, have the right to demand I open as an Italian. Mr. Disney. No, 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 no. A fighting, exactly. More a kind of. A, you know, standing at the door watching after the teacher. Kind of. Very crispy, these wontons. Little scar. I'm a great believer in. Scars, Mr. Disley. Oh, I was hoping you were going to say Buddhism then. <laughs> Good reminds about keeping your place. Absolutely, yeah. But you know, having said that, I know my place and I've got a very good memory, so you know, I, I probably won't be needing the scar. Have you? Yeah, very, very. Yeah. Yeah, ask me anything. The director of Stealing Beauty, Fernando Bertolucci, and it's it's bloody over a week since I saw that. But three weeks, actually. I don't think so, Mr. Disney. I don't think so.
first thing to remember about responsibility is it's not all about rules, you know. In fact, our greatest responsibility as adults is to ensure that children can have as good time while they can. Hodge, have you brought the midnight feast? Secondly, I mean, children are like sponges. They just pick things up when you least expect it. Just shut it. Oh, it's going to be great, man. Warm night, stars, midnight feast. Oh, makes me laugh. Do you know who did this? You said you saw it actually happen. What stage did the body in? Too early to tell. It's been lying at least seven hours in pretty polluted water. Oh, God. God, Mr. Disley. Oh, God, no. Steve! Blaming restaurant when you came for me, this wouldn't have happened. But I couldn't let her beat me, Eric. You were the one who said fight back, weren't you? Don't let your rival restaurant. I know what I said, don't I? I know what I bl No, no, speech. Next time I come out with a golden egg, remind me we should stick it. Eric. What I was going to say to you was about your parents and, and, and swimming pool cleaners, but it doesn't matter now, does it, eh? You just proved them right. Mix it with me, I've dragged you down. Is that what you think? I just wanted to show them. No, I will rise. I will rise. Your daughter won't fall. Where have we ended up, eh? Up all night. Scarred face, dragging a scouse's transit out of a canal. It's not a career, it's crime watch. If anyone ever asks me, Mr. Disley, I shall tell them that if I went to college for the next 300 years and read all the books in creation, I could not aspire to be the love of human being that you are. Me noodle bowl, shit! I'll have you, Shoe. I'll have you. I'm you to the monkey. You, you you're, you're dead, you are. It's okay, Mr. Diddley. I'm still being positive here. I'm proud. I'm strong. I'm Wang.